Could Brock Bowers and Ladd McConkey return to the Georgia football team in 2024? Will those guys forego the NFL draft and go back to Georgia and try to take care of unfinished business? Something that Cedric Van Pran Granger, the center for Georgia, kind of had in mind in, in 2023. And Georgia, look, they didn't make it to the finish line that they wanted, right? The Orange Bowl is still a very respectable bowl game. We're talking about a New Year's Six bowl game here. Um, we're talking about one of the most historic bowl games right out there. And just because it's not the playoff and just because, you know, look, they did get snubbed. Georgia did get snubbed and, you know, didn't beat Alabama and everything. That doesn't mean the end of this season is terrible, right? Georgia can still come home with a near six bowl. Another one under Kirby Smart, just adding trophies to the trophy case, even if it wasn't the trophy that all the Georgia fans and obviously all the Georgia Bulldogs wanted. Will those guys, will those guys return? I think that no. The answer to me is no. I wouldn't say 100% no for Ladd McConkey. If Brock Bowers decides to return, I really would be kind of shocked. I just think that when you have an opportunity – to go as a top 10 NFL draft pick. I don't know how many people in the world are passing this up. I mean, it's not like, you know, people, the argument has been made. And the reason I'm doing this video is because the argument has been made. You know, those guys haven't declared yet. Those guys haven't declared yet. They're, they're coming back. They're coming back. And Georgia's going to avenge in 2024. And they're going to be a part of it. And look, Georgia has a good chance regardless of whether those guys are on the team or not, to win a national championship in 2024. There's, Georgia's still going to be one of the leading contenders to do that. They're go, there's going to be a shot. It's going to be different. It's going to be a lot harder. I'm going to talk about that in a different video coming up soon. Just kind of the details of why I think it's a lot harder to win now heading forward. But And look, there's also a counter-argument to that. For Ladd, obviously didn't play a lot this year. We're talking about someone who's 22, 23 years old that has back problems and other, you know, and other and other injuries have been a part of his career too. So it's not it's not just the back problems, but the back problems I'm going to guess might be a red flag to some NFL teams. Maybe right, you know, right now is that process where they're talking to scouts, they're talking to doctors, they're talking to draft graders, they're talking to whoever uh, teams. You know, what is your value in this draft? Uh, ESPN has Ladd McConkey in the top 50, if I'm not mistaken. They have Ladd McConkey as the number eight overall receiver, and they've got him at number 37 overall as a prospect right now. I don't know exactly how recent these rankings are, but let's go to the wide receiver rankings. Let's talk about Ladd McConkey first in this conversation because I think it's a little less ridiculous with Ladd. That's so let's have this conversation. And again, again, if, if somehow you're at this point of the video, I don't think Brock Bowers is going to return to Georgia. Um, at least I don't know that he is. I, I don't I don't think so. And yes, they can come back and make a lot of money and it is different, but I mean passing that up is is tough. So ESPN has Okay, and look, I've watched all these guys. So here we go. ESPN is Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunzi, Keon Coleman, um, Xavier Leggett from South Carolina, Troy, Flank Troy Franklin, Lab McConkey, Ameke Buka, Xavier Worthy. I skipped on someone. And Adonai Mitchell. They have A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy behind Lab McConkey. They've got Ameke Buka behind Lab McConkey. Look, I've seen plenty of mock drafts, and look, with A.D. Mitchell and Emeka Ibuka in the first round, I've seen plenty of them. And the thing about wide receivers is their value is going up because of the way football is being played, the way contracts are being viewed, the way positions are being viewed, the way that quarterbacks impact the football game, and wide receivers have become a more valuable position. That's shown by how many get drafted high. That's shown by how impactful they are. That's shown by how popular they are. That's shown by how many dollars they make. Um, and it, it's shown by the stats as well. So Lad McConkey, this is a deep draft. I mean, oh, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunzi. Those guys are legit. Keon Coleman, that's a legit. Those are, they're all going to go in the first round. All of them. Brian Thomas Jr., I don't think is a first rounder. But very, very good wide receiver for LSU. Xavier Leggett's obviously very good. Troy Franklin, Lab McConkey, Xavier Worthy. They've got uh, Lab McConkey ranked ahead of Jermaine Burton in this thing. They've got him as the number 13 overall receiver 
in this upcoming draft. So that's my point here. Because of even though it's a deep wide receiver draft, and I think these guys can be really good NFL players, because he's ranked so high as a wide receiver, and and this is obviously off of what I'm looking at ESPN. I've seen other places that have him ranked high as well. I'm just want to have a list in front of me and maybe doctors say otherwise, or maybe someone else says otherwise. I mean, we're talking about Lama Conkey being a second or third round pick with these kind of rankings. I and mean, I think it's hard to pass up on that. A second or third round pick as a wide receiver is someone who's expected to contribute immediately on NFL rosters. Immediately. That's what would be expected of Lab McConkey. So is this legitimate where he actually is going to come back right now? I'm not, I'm not thinking that. Um, just because people have viewed him as such a high talent and everything like that, I think he can be an NFL contributor. He has plenty of tape. That's that's another argument for leaving. Even though he didn't play as much this year, and let me, you know, if you get his numbers, you just pull up his stats throughout the years, right? He's got three years of being a contributor, his best year being in 2022 where he was the leading receiver outside of Brock Bowers with 762 yards and the seven touchdowns. Deals with injuries all throughout 2023. Still comes up with 29 catches, 456 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, contributing through injury, uh, missing a few games. He still came up with, you know, okay numbers given the circumstances. And like I said, developed plenty of tape. I think he's done enough to go. It would be a medical thing or a personal reason, I believe, for why he would stay. Move on. Real quick on Brock Bowers. Because to me, if I'm sitting in the room with Brock Bowers, I'm telling you, bro, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of Athens, man. I know that you can come back and make a lot of money. I know on three has you ranked as number 60 in NIL evaluation. And that includes guys like Dylan Raiola who's ranked ahead of him. Guys like Bronny James. Uh, you know, younger people. And obviously so for some of them. But Bowers doesn't take all of his NIL money. So I don't think it's about how much money can Brock Bowers make. I don't think this is a money conversation. I think this is probably a future conversation for Bowers. And obviously, I am not in these conversations with these guys, and I'm not helping them make this choice. This is just a topic for me to discuss with you. And if Brock Bowers is a top 10 prospect, which every board has him as a top 10 prospect in this draft, we're talking about a guy that would be, it would be absolutely shocking if he fell out of like the top 15 in this NFL draft. If he doesn't go in the top 15. I mean, that's real NFL money. That's that's the future. And my other point with Brock Bowers, I know he loves Georgia, and I know he just wants to play football, and that's why you saw him fight back so hard from injury and why you might see him play in the Orange Bowl at the point uh, at Friday evening when this is being recorded. I don't know about Brock Bowers' status. I don't know about Lavin Conkey's status for both the Orange Bowl and the draft. Neither of those have been announced at the time of this recording. Obviously, it's not going to go up if that happens in the next 24 hours. But he didn't grow up a Georgia fan. It's not like... Brock, you know, played his whole life wanting to be a Georgia fan or anything. He's out from California. um, And the dude just wants to play football. And I think it's hard to pass up on the opportunity to do it in the NFL when when you've got people drooling at the mouth. You've got people drooling over you as a prospect. Hard to pass up on that. That's my thought on the thing. But maybe they do come back. Maybe they do come back to Georgia. We'll see. Thanks for watching.